Hello friends, tonight we're taking a look at the Trigicon RMR, one of the most popular optics on the market. How the hell have I never reviewed this thing? You will see it on a ton of guns, but it seems to be most popular as a pistol optic. Really, it was the first pistol optic that I saw becoming widespread when folks first started having their Glocks milled back in the day. But they also pop up often on rifles, PCCs, shotguns, and as an auxiliary short-range option, accompanying something bigger and zoomier like an LPVO or ACOG. The RMR is everywhere. There are probably home marital aids that are cut for the RMR. I think my microwave has three RMR cuts on the front alone. As popular as the RMR is, it has some problems. They sometimes have reliability issues. You have to take it off the gun to change the battery, and the glass isn't amazing. But most importantly, the open top design is less than optimal in 2023. Cards on the table, the RMR is probably my favorite small optic, but it does have problems and we're going to dive into those. And we'll talk about the suitability of the RMR for different platforms and applications. The RMR is like your awful cat. You love that cat. It's your favorite cat. But you're also aware that it pretends to be friendly to the neighborhood kids before it rolls over on its back for belly pets as a ruse to make them feel safe before it mauls them half to death. And then you get a knock on your door from concerned parents who demand to see the cat's vaccination records and you must disavow ownership of your treasured cat. That ain't my cat. The RMR is my favorite cat. But what the hell is the RMR? The RMR is a micro open top red dot, the name being an acronym for like uh, really miniature, rugged, miniaturized red dot or something. It was introduced in 2009, as far as I can tell, and was often paired at the time with the ACOG, sitting atop it on a little mount like my fictional cat perched atop my neighbor's fence hunting for human flesh. Later, the RMR became a common option for most any gun. It was found that the first generation RMRs needed to be a bit more reliable to cope with the recoil forces they were subjected to on certain guns, uh, most notably on pistol slides. Thus, the Type 2 or second generation RMR was released with more robust internals and greater battery life. I think those were the only changes. They produce a fiber optic model, but we're only looking at the battery powered Type 2 RMR with the buttons to control the brightness rather than the model that always auto adjusts. Although this will auto adjust as well, but it's very nice to have the manual control. I've used several different dot sizes and I own several different dot sizes. These are available with one 3.25 and 6.5 MOA dots. I prefer the one MOA dots uh, having tried the others. I'm doing this video partially because the RMR is beginning to feel a bit dated. There are so many options now from Hollow Sun and others and the fully enclosed Aimpoint Acro. Is the RMR still as relevant as it was, especially at its relatively high price point compared to other options? Well, I don't think it is. So let's talk about why. Features. Presently on the table is the one MOA Type 2 RMR with adjustable brightness buttons in a fetching matte black color. With no mount, the RMR weighs 1.2 ounces, and with that one bit of information, we found why the RMR is perhaps my favorite red dot, even with the problems that it has. It's very, very light. The RMR is powered by a CR2032 battery that is loaded into the bottom of it, and it is sandwiched between the RMR and the mount. Uh, mine all have the ceiling plate installed on the bottom between the RMR and the mount, which makes the optic waterproof down to 66 feet, or Trigicon says. Mine have only ever been tested by rain and no problems there. Despite being a semi-aquatic flightless bird, I don't subject many of my guns to anything resembling hard use. Having lived so long in captivity, I no longer display natural penguin behaviors, so I think I would perish long before the RMR would. You have to remove the RMR from the plate to change the battery, as I said, and then you have to re-zero the optic. This doesn't bother me, but it may bother you. We'll address the other complaints later. Trigicon says that at brightness 4 of 8, the battery will last 4 years. That's on par with what I've seen in my own examples, and I have many of them at the moment. And that's also exactly the amount of time it takes for the ATF to declare a product legal, let millions of people buy it, and then declare it illegal. So a good rule of thumb is that anytime the government takes away something you like, it's probably time to check the battery. You adjust the windage and elevation here and here. I'll include some close-up pictures too. Adjustments are one MOA per click and you can both hear and feel the clicks. It's very nice. These big buttons on either side control the brightness. They do not click, but you'll be able to see if the brightness is increasing or decreasing. 
hitting the plus or minus button will put the optic in manual mode for something like 16 hours and then after that the brightness will return to automatic mode. You can re-enter automatic mode by pressing and holding both brightness buttons for less than three seconds. I say less because after three seconds you will turn the optic off. So. Pinch there, hold for three seconds, and it's off. And turn it back on. Just hit one of the buttons. And we're back on. And let's put it back in automatic mode. Perfect. And it's nice that you can turn it off to conserve battery life, but given how long one of the batteries lasts, eh, I just leave them all on. So how does the RMR work? Well, it's an open top optic. This cuts down on weight and size. The dots emitter is here towards the rear of the body of the optic and it projects forward through the open space to the tented glass at the front. Red dot glass must be somewhat tinted to reflect the dot back for your eyes to see it. The question is, to what degree is the optic tinted? And with that in mind, let's talk about some of the problems that the RMR has. The biggest one is that, as an open top design, the emitter can become blocked and will not shine the dot onto the glass. Dirt, sand, poop, or whatever else you animals get into your optics will block them from working, and that sucks. So if shit gets in here and blocks where the emitter is shining out, yeah, the dot's not going to be on the glass, because how could it be? And so that's obviously... A big problem potentially depending on what you're doing with the gun could be a deal breaker for you though I haven't had this problem to a significant degree for some people also when they get rain on these there's gonna be a sort of star bursting that is very inconvenient that likely means that I've just been lucky and I've only seen sort of minor artifacts on the glass from water but for some people it can be rendered nearly unusable if there's enough rain water on it if you get enough water under the emitter and screen, eh, some weird shit's going to happen. It's just kind of unavoidable because, again, it's got to shine through the water or onto the watery glass for it to work. So the armor works in the rain generally, but you're not going to get optimal performance, and it may drive you crazy, you know, depending on the degree to which it does the star bursting. So the open top design is the biggest problem, and we cannot discount how much of an issue that is. In addition to usage disruptions by environmental factors, the open top design also makes the damn thing harder to aim. Once you get your draw down, you can immediately move that pistol into the aiming position with the dot clearly visible, but this does take practice with an open top optic. It's going to take practice with anything, but especially one of these. Uh, closed emitters have a tube effect, much more like a traditional rifle red dot and are easier to aim, but we're going to talk about that in, in greater detail in the performance section of the video. In my MRO video, I noted that folks complain endlessly about the MRO glass, but rarely the RMR. The RMR has among the worst glass I've ever seen. There is a lot of tint, more magnification than I've ever seen in any other optic, and a noticeable fisheye effect. Don't take my word for it. Let's look at some pictures. And let's compare it to the Aimpoint T2 and this Holosun while we're at it. Hell, you know, let's just throw an MRO in there too. So, as you can see, by far the RMR is the worst of the bunch. So all red dots have problems like we talked about in the MRO video, even the extravagantly expensive Aimpoint T2. But the question is, to what degree relative to other options? The RMR has these problems perhaps the worst of any optic I've seen, though it's not like I've owned or tested everything on the market or even close to it. There's a, a, a million red dots on the market. The, the zoom is almost amazing. There is so much magnification uh, from this lens. It's, it's actually kind of funny, but people rarely complain about it. Yeah, well, yeah, look at that. And last of all, it may very much bother you that you have to remove the optic from the mount, thereby disrupting your zero to change the battery. But because the battery life is so long, I'm not personally bothered by this, but I can't blame you if you are. It's inconvenient, and zeroing your gun sucks. It's not fun. But yet, despite these problems, the optic still works well for me. What, what, what the hell gives there? Performance. I've had great luck with the RMR. I have yet to have one fail, but I do have to note that other people online have had plenty of failures, especially during the pandemic. Trijicon's quality control seemed to suffer at the time. I had multiple friends who bought optics from Trijicon that were either non-functional right out of the box or had serious problems shortly after. A few of these friends had several units fail, a couple of which were replacements for failed ones. That's completely unacceptable. I've just been lucky, and I have to note that. Trijicon has great customer service, and hopefully they're stepping up quality control, but I don't know that definitively.
With that out of the way, why do I like the RMR so much? Simply, it weighs almost nothing and there are a ton of mounts for them. That, that's it. They don't have great image quality. They can be defeated by dirt and you have to take them off the mount to change the battery. But they are super light and fast. On this Aero Precision with a 16 inch pencil barrel, I have an ACOG and an RMR on an Arasaka canted mount. The ACOG is fairly light, especially for something with four power magnification. The RMR and mount only adds a few ounces. Yeah, I could have mounted it on top, but I like this arrangement a bit more based on my undoubtedly poor technique. The ACOG has amazing glass and a huge field of view. It's frankly amazing and having the ability to immediately flip over to the RMR and have super fast shots at 50 yards and under is just magical. This setup is lightning quick. For me, it's faster than adjusting the zoom on an LPVO and I really like the way the LPVOs look at one power. I feel very confident using this arrangement and I get great hits very quickly out to 50 yards with this side mounted RMR. And then past that, it's a breeze just to switch back to the ACOG. And the same thing goes for the RMR on my Beretta 1301. The RMR adds very little weight to the gun, and this Aridus Crom mount, I guess that's how you say it. That's, that sounds really dumb when you say it like that. It has the rear sight integrated, so it doesn't add a ton of weight either. Um, no, there's going to be some, of course. Here, it's easier to identify exactly why the RMR is so fast. The open top design is helping with speed in this case. While you notice more of the problems such a design has when mounted on a pistol, on a rifle or shotgun, you never get toilet paper tube vision like you can get with a traditional red dot, and you perceive that you have a greater field of view. You can also be in a less than ideal alignment with the dot and still be able to get it on target despite the relatively small piece of glass on the RMR, and that's because your, your eyes are you know, pretty damn close to it. It's going to appear bigger to you. With a shotgun, tracking clays, let's say, or very quickly transitioning between targets that are quite large but far apart because you're shooting at them so close, the open top design lets me feel like I have better awareness of my surroundings. This might be entirely subjective. You may use the RMR and never experience this, but I certainly do. Let me know what you think if you've ever noticed this. So I feel that this open top design aids you in these circumstances. I don't know if the pros outweigh the cons, but maybe you'll see a slight speed boost like I do. However, with a pistol, I notice problems. First off, when you're learning to use a red dot on a pistol and you're mastering your draw, that small piece of glass much further away from your face than it is on a rifle or a shotgun, you have a much smaller area in which the dot can sit and be visible to you. And without an enclosed housing to help you line up the optic until you build that muscle memory, you may find that you have trouble locating the dot. Think of it like this. The two pieces of glass in an enclosed optic are like a front and a rear sight. You align them and have your picture. We are trained to do this from the moment we start learning to shoot. But with an open top optic, you only have one piece of glass. It's like having only a front sight. We know from shooting shotguns that only have a front bead, you can absolutely shoot this way, but it's harder to align for precision. But still, the RMR is the standard on pistols. Why? Well, it's been around a long time and it's very common. And so folks are accustomed to working around these issues and so they don't see these things as big problems. It's the first one I used, so I definitely fall into that camp. A lot of these things just don't bother me because I've been using it forever. That said, I can't help but wonder, would I have progressed more quickly if I had started with the Aimpoint Acro? Yeah, it wasn't out at the time, but I think it would have helped me. And more closed emitter designs are starting to hit the market. I think they're the future. But if you've trained with the RMR for years, I found it to be very solid and reliable. Of the open top designs, I think it's my favorite. However, I have to note my own bias here. Because Hollow Sun was initially thought of as a Chinese knockoff brand, I haven't adapted with the times. Hollow Sun is no longer just the company making Aimpoint knockoffs. Now they produce a host of excellent and beloved original designs. And there is no denying that even on some of their open top designs, you know, some of the reticles are better and the glass is almost always superior. I'll leave my comfort zone soon and give one of those a shot. While the RMR offers excellent performance, that doesn't mean it offers the best performance these days. It's a solid option and you can't go wrong with it, but I'm not sure it's at the top anymore. It's still my favorite habits and familiarity die hard, right? Final thoughts. I love the RMR. I have a ton of them, but 
it's got some problems. When I look through one, I feel warm and fuzzy inside as I view the target through a very blue, distorted, and somewhat magnified lens. I'm just comfortable with these. The RMR is super fast, especially on a rifle or a shotgun. It weighs nothing, but the more I worked on this review, the more it became obvious that the RMR is a dated design. And maybe I'm feeling a bit dated myself, I guess. I've used this one for so long, I'm at risk of becoming like the guy at the range that tells you the 1911 is still the greatest handgun ever designed. I don't want to be that guy. I plan to branch out and learn some new things and maybe experiment with some new optics that aren't made by Trijicon Aimpoint or EOTech. If you're looking for a pistol optic, I'm not sure the RMR is where you should start. Yeah, you should absolutely try one just to know they're great, but that doesn't mean there aren't better options. The greatness of something is relative to its peers, and the RMR is falling behind. That doesn't mean it's suddenly slower and shittier than it used to be, but our standards have been raised. So do your research and try everything you can get your hands on. Odds are good you're going to like something else that you try a bit more than the RMR. Let me know what you end up going with. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you soon. Night-night.